Fresh, pure, and natural. The only beer with the genuine taste of the king of beers, Budweiser. We found out that MCI offers a program where we can put one number in for an overseas friend or family and get a 20% discount. When MCI said you can submit one overseas number, I thought, this is the ticket. The person at the other end said, did you know that you can add an international number to your friends and family circle? And I'm like, sign me up. I can get 20% off calling that one number in Japan. My daughter's going to Europe this summer for two months and I get 20% off on that international call. MCI is a great way to save money morning breath. Once you're married, you get used to it. Deep down, you know it's a problem. I don't smell anything. <laughs> Lucky you. Morning breath. <laughs> if I had it, they'd tell me. Ignoring morning breath won't make it go away. Scope will. Its two powerful ingredients kill 90% of the bacteria that cause morning breath. <sighs> Is my morning breath really a big problem? Oh. There's no denying it's a problem. Kiss morning breath goodbye with Scope. The race is on to make batteries that last longer. And today's Duracell batteries can even outrun the ones we made just a few years ago. Today's Duracell. You can't top. The Copper Top. In case you joined us late, this game was actually tied at seven. And for the record, Angola got the first basket after a U.S. free throw, and they led it 1.2 to 1. But at halftime, the U.S. has exactly quadrupled Angola's score at 64 to 16. Now, before the game, we told you the story through Marv Albert's reporting of the U.S. disappointment in 1988 when they settled for bronze. But really, when you look back over the Olympic history of U.S. basketball, the biggest disappointment came in 1972. The greatest controversy perhaps in the history of all organized basketball. Never been a more controversial game than the gold medal contest in Munich in 1972. There the Soviets dealt the Americans their first ever Olympic loss. Later in our coverage of these games we'll hear from the United States players from that 1972 team with their perspective 20 years later. But right now we bring you the story in a way that perhaps you've never seen it before through the eyes of the Soviets. It's among the most controversial moments in Olympic history. The 51-50 Soviet victory on a last-second basket sent waves of disbelief and outrage across the United States. The loss stunned the United States team, which had never been beaten in 36 years of Olympic basketball. A streak of 63 games and seven gold medals. Meanwhile, Vladimir Kondrashin, the Soviet head coach, felt the time was ripe for an upset. American basketball was stronger than ours, but we exploited their mistake, the underestimation of our ability. Because the Soviets were given three chances to inbound the ball in the final three seconds, the Americans have always felt they were robbed. Sergei Belov, the Soviet's high scorer that day, has this perspective. We'll never find out who was right and who was wrong. In all fairness, there's always two sides with completely different opinions. The Soviets had led throughout the game, with time running down and the USA trailing by one. Doug Collins stole a pass and was fouled hard on his way to the basket. The clock showed three seconds remaining. Soviet backup center Alexander Boloshev relived the moment. I hoped he was through, but when I saw his eyes, his concentrated gaze, I thought that this guy would make his two foul shots, and he did. I thought we probably lost, but hope remained. Soviet center Arjan Zharmukamedov quickly inbounded the ball, while his coaches frantically signaled for timeout. When I threw the ball the first time, Sergei Belov caught it, and the buzzer went. And I thought, why did the buzzer go off so early? But the buzzer was not for the end of the game, but from the scorekeeper, because our coach had asked for timeout. According to international rules, the Soviets were not allowed to call timeout during Collins' free throws. They were granted timeout with one second remaining. Although he had no authority to do so, 
The Basketball Federation General Secretary, Dr. William Jones of Great Britain, came out of the crowd to tell the scorekeepers that three seconds should be put back on the clock, setting the stage for the infamous ending. There are another three seconds left. As the players returned to the court, the timekeeper was resetting the clock to three seconds. Inexplicably, the ref handed the ball to Ivan Yadeshko for the second throw-in before the clock was completely reset. Yadeshko inbounded for what the Americans thought was the final play of the game. But the clock had not been properly reset to three seconds. You must not enter the hall. So General Secretary Jones and the officials cleared the court for a third throw-in. Meanwhile, Coach Vladimir Kondrashin was speaking to his team. I said that three seconds is a lot of time. Everything isn't lost. Soviet guard Ivan Yadeshko remembered that huddle. Coach said that I must uh, give pass for Belov. Only one moment that we, it is possible to win a long pass. This year, in my opinion, the Americans make a mistake. McMillan began to guard Yadeshko making the pass when with his height he should have been guarding Belov. We have an expression to go crazy from happiness. When Alexander Belov made the last basket, he was running without understanding anything. The Americans immediately filed a protest which wasn't resolved till the following day when a five-man jury voted 3-2 to deny the appeal. All three negative votes coming from Eastern Bloc nations. Silver medal, USA. The American team unanimously refused to participate in the award ceremony or to accept their silver medals. I wasn't surprised, but it was a bit insulting. It wasn't sporting of them. You have to accept things as they are in life. Today you lose, but life goes on. The former Soviet Olympic heroes have gone their separate ways. Boloshev, Jarmukhamedov, and Yadeshko all live in Moscow. They still gather on the basketball court to play pickup games with other former Soviet Olympians. Yadeshko, who threw the winning pass, lives in Moscow with his wife, and he coaches the Soviet Army team. Alexander Belov, who scored the final basket, died in 1978 from heart disease. His memory is celebrated often near St. Petersburg by his mother, Maria. He didn't even like to be asked about the 1972 game. He only said I had to make the last basket, but it was the achievement of the whole team. Coach Vladimir Kondrashin lives in St. Petersburg, where he coaches a club team. Sergei Belov, who scored 20 of the 51 points in that 72 game, spent many years as a prominent Soviet club coach before moving to Italy to live and coach in the Italian League. Even with the thaw of the Cold War, the 1972 gold medal game is still a hot topic. For the past 20 years, all Americans constantly ask me this. Always the questions and that we won by cheating. The only thing we can do is gather the plays from 72 and play another game. That is the only chance to dot the eye. So, from the perspective of the players for the former Soviet Union, I don't know what the Angolans' perspective could possibly be here. 64-16, Mike and Marv after this. It's one of the most powerful weapons in the world. It's in the hands of average citizens. It's captured criminals and created heroes. It's changed America forever. The power of video. Experience it when an all-new eyewitness video returns Sunday after the Olympics. We're squeezing toothpaste, slicing deodorant, and moving to deep discount drug prices every day. Great new prices from the health and beauty aisle, boss. Make them lower. Lower. I can do that. Now Kroger red tags mean deep discount drug prices, too. Look for new red tag price reductions in the health and beauty aisle at Kroger Food and Drug. Rain. I used to hate driving in it, but not anymore. My new Pontiac Grand Am has standard anti-lock brakes that help me maintain steering control. It's
especially on rain slick roads. I looked at Camry Deluxe with anti-lock brakes, but it would have cost over $4,000 or more. And now Grand Am's an even better value with Smart Buy. $199 a month buys a new Pontiac Grand Am. See Lehman Hendrick, Gus Weiler, John Dukoski, Indian Mound, Kane, McDaniel, and Plaza Pontiac. Pontiac Grand Am. Safety and value. Uh. <laughs> Using a spinner lure to snag a wall. Tired of the vast wasteland of weekend morning TV? Well, rejoice! Now every Saturday and Sunday beginning at 7 a.m., News 4 gives you the perfect choice. Sheldon Ripson and Lauren Schultz will help you make the most of your weekend. You'll thrill the Brett Atkins Outdoor Adventures. And Tom McNutt unlocks the secrets of a super garden. Plus, you'll get up-to-the-minute news, in-depth sports, and complete weather. News 4 Weekend, at last, weekend TV for grown-ups. It's a sizzling week for the Joan Rivers Show. On Monday, meet talk show hosts from around the world. Tuesday's a tell-all tribute for Jackie O's 63rd birthday. Wednesday heats up with music and box office chart toppers. Natalie Cole, Arm Vogue, Kitten Play, Celine Dion, and Wayne's World's Mike Myers. On Thursday, Married with Children's David Faustino on nightclub antics of the 90s. And on Friday, people who say love cleaned out my bank account. Don't miss the Joan Rivers Show. Weekday mornings at 11 right here on WCMH4. The U.S. 64 and Angola 16. And by the way, just one more note about that uh, game in 1972. As we said, we're going to show it to you from the U.S. perspective. We'll talk with a great majority of the players who were involved in that game for the United States team uh, a bit later in our coverage of these games of the 25th Olympiad. But it's interesting to note that almost to a man, and they're asked periodically, they have been asked over the last 20 years, and as recently as a year or so ago, they were asked whether they wanted their silver medals whether they wanted them sent to them, and almost to a man, they all still say, forget about it. We will never accept the silver medal. Let's go out to Marv Albert and Mike Fratello. They are calling this game, and Marv, you have called many, and I am guessing this is the greatest mismatch of your career. I don't mean working with Fratello, I mean the game itself. I'm glad you cleared that up. There was a game back at PS225 in Brooklyn, though, I must say, where... Uh it was almost a shutout. You two the, teamed up now, right? Obviously, for the uh, first half. Uh, but uh, yes, look at look at these numbers. Uh, 31 straight points at one stretch. 46 to one run by the United States. And uh, way back, this was a 7-7 game. And there are actually people here wondering what's going on. Well, it started out with the slow, big USA team trying to get out there and play defense. And Angola was very patient, moved the basketball made some early shots and the USA had some problems making shots but when they substituted and brought the quick team in then things started to turn around and you're talking about transition score after score Charles Barkley taking it to the basket finishing for the USA team and then on the way back a little bit of what may have been a little friendly elbow however the officials didn't think so and wound up hitting Charles with a technical foul and Erlander Codembra did not uh, think it was a uh, a friendly elbow either Charles Barkley with a terrific uh, first half. He hit six out of seven uh, from the field, two or three from the line. He's the high man with 14. The United States, 23 for 37 shooting overall. Angola, six for 32. It has been a rout, 64-16 in the first half. Let's go over to Quinn Buckner with Coach Chuck Daly. All right, thanks, Marv. Coach Daly, you go in, your team all of a sudden started off a little bit slow, but then they decided to pick it up. What do you tell them? I mean, I don't know what to tell them. What do you tell them? Well, I really didn't say much at half, but, uh, you know, we did talk to them. Uh, the atmosphere is a little bit different. You know, it is the Olympic Games. We know Angola is not a strong club. We wanted to play good defense primarily. And, uh, you know, the Angolan coach did not think that the NBA played defense. I think our guys wanted to make a little statement about it. Well, there's no question they made a statement about it. If you need luck, good luck in the second half. Thank you. Back to you, Marv. Yes, I don't think uh, luck will be a factor in this one. We'll be back with the second half from Barcelona in a moment. The games of the 25th Olympiad are brought to you by Budweiser, the king of beers and proud sponsor of the U.S. Olympic team. By PPG. PPG salutes the American spirit. By United Airlines, proud sponsor of the 1992 U.S. Olympic team. Come fly the friendly skies. And by Time Magazine. If it's important to you, you'll find it in Time. We'll be back after these messages. 
The rush is on for the incomparable new GE Profile refrigerator. The GE Profile is full of smart ideas, like a shelf that tucks away for tall things, and shelves that glide out so you can find things. It's called Smart Space Design. Smart ideas that let you put things in, take things out, and clean things up so quickly and easily that you'll never again miss GE. your favorite commercials. We bring good things to life. The people of Barcelona have enthusiastically accepted the art of Picasso, the sculpture of Miro, and the architecture of Gaudi. Nearly 40,000 merchants in and around Barcelona also gladly accept the American Express card. So when you go there this summer, take your passport and the American Express card. And remember, to visit Spain, you don't need a visa. To fight the effects of corrosion, the body of the Buick Regal has been built with two-side galvanized steel that goes beyond what most car makers use. Beyond Honda, beyond Toyota. In fact, all Buicks are warranted against outer body rust through for six years or 100,000 miles. And that's a promise you don't have to take with a grain of salt. Nothing quite as fine as Sargento fancy shredded natural cheese for cooks with more taste than time. Sargento of Wisconsin.